Now, Afro Forum wants Julius Malema to answer for claims of corruption in Limpopo. He says, bring it on. The civil group's advocate, Gerinel, announced today that Malema and his co-accused would be privately prosecuted for fraud and corruption unless the National Prosecuting Authority heeds the organization's demand that the case be reinstated. Malema initially faced charges in relation to a Limpopo government tender with more than 40 million rand that was awarded to on-point engineering to build roads and bridges in the province. Now, to discuss this, we're joined by Afroforum CEO Kali Creel to explain their intentions. Mr. Creel, thank you very much for joining us this evening. Good evening, ma'am. It's a pleasure being here. Now, before we focus on Julius Malima's issue specifically, I want to look at the fact that you've gone this route before. Um, what happened the last time around with former President uh, Jacob Zuma's son, Dutuzani, and his case? Yes, uh, we also, there was a decision by the National Prosecuting Authority not to prosecute him. We then said, okay, give us a chance to privately prosecute. And uh, we've heard today the news that the uh, NPA has reconsidered and they are now going to go ahead with prosecution. So that is not only a victory for us, it's also a victory for the Dubai family that we represent in this matter. And it's also a victory for the rule of law. And it shows that civil society pressure is needed because nothing has changed since the previous time they decided not to prosecute. Uh, so we're quite proud of the fact that there is now prosecution and a person uh, is being held accountable for a young woman that died uh, because of negligence by Mr. Duduzani Zuma. I'm actually glad you speak of civil society pressure. Would you say that this is what you're attempting to do in the case of Mr. Julius Malema? Yes, what we've said all along is that we recognize the NPA um, is the organization that needs to prosecute and they have the first bite at the cherry. We only intervene in cases where we know that there is a strong case and because of political or other reasons there's no prosecutions. Uh, we cannot understand why the NPA now wants to reconsider the matter. They already investigated it and they decided that there is a strong case against Mr. Malema. They started with that case. It was struck off the roll simply because one of the co-accused was, was sick. He, the sick person has recovered but it's now been two years and eight months and the uh, prosecution was, has not been reinstated and we want to make sure that it is reinstated. Now, as a part of civil society, you are representing the society at large, as you say. Something that we did earlier on was immediately after the story broke and, and, and Julius Malema said, you know, bring it on. And the EFF themselves labeling this as, as almost racist or actually racist. We ran a poll asking, do they believe that this is racially motivated? 82% of the respondents said yes. What's your take on that response? Well, it's unfortunate uh, that uh, the issue is sidetracked in this manner, um, but uh, it's also expected. The fact is when a person um, has been uh, done things that are criminal, stealing taxpayers' money, you would expect them to try and blame everybody else um, despite themselves. We have to look at the facts in this matter. The facts are that uh, Mr. Malemba had a big stake in on-point engineering, on-point engineering had to advise the Limpopo government on dishing out tenders and there are contracts where people that got tenders agreed to give a kickback to on-point and millions of rand has been paid into the on-point account. That money was used by Mr. Malema to buy a farm. Later when the prosecution started, the asset forfeiture, forfeiture unit uh, took back the farm and the person that acquired the farm legally would fight that, but Mr. Malema did not do that because he knew the farm was bought that money that with money that was stolen, and it's actually ironic that a person such as Mr. Malema that portrays himself as a representative of the poor would loot the state coffers because we know the state coffers is used to pay social grants and so forth. Um, so we believe it's in the interest also of poor people, uh, but everybody in the country, that uh, the rule of law should be upheld and he should have his day in court. I'm glad he said bring it on, so it means that he's willing to go to court and we would welcome that and we'll see him in court. Let's look at the notion that this has a lot to do with the issue of expropriation of land without compensation, considering that this has been yeah. driven by the EFF. Um, the motion um, you know, w was passed in, 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 in Parliament uh, earlier this year in February. 
And the concern now is that he's being attacked because of that, because the EFF is largely driving this. Well, if you look at the history of this case, um, I was personally involved in lodging a complaint at the police against Mr. Malema, and that was on the 24th of July 2011. That was long before any discussions about expropriation without compensation. So but the pressure is there now, and Afriforum is highly against it. Yeah, we've given uh, pressure from 2011 for this prosecution to go ahead. And now Mr. Malema is what is, tries to sidetrack uh, the case against him. We're willing to go into a debate uh, with regard to expropriation without compensation. But we shouldn't mix the two issues with one another. The fact is there is clear evidence that uh, Mr. Malema is corrupt. And are people now saying simply because there's another debate going on, he should not be held accountable? That can't be. Mr. Creel, unfortunately, we've run out of time. It would have been great to chat a little bit more. That was Afriforum CEO, Mr. Kali Creel, joining us for that discussion on the Afriforum's decision to personally prosecute EFF leader Julius Malema. I'll have more news for you after the break. Stay with us.